one of the very first meetings, I remember you were in my uh, circle of five leadership Zoom conference call. And, yeah. and <laughs> I'll never forget when people are saying, like, what's their goal to get out of this? And you're like, I want to quit watching porn. <laughs> and everybody's like, they're like, is what? he joking? Because I was like, I don't know if he's going to fucking laugh here in a minute. And like, oh, never mind. But you were serious. And I was like, all right, we're not, we're not, Ollie's going to educate us on his porn habits. Yeah, it was it was a serious time. I was committed, man. How I, long ago was that? I feel like it was two years ago, maybe. I don't necessarily want to go to social media. But I feel like I have an obligation, kind of, a responsibility, because people, people have begun to trust me there. Mm. So the test is, will I show up? Right, it's, it's not an opportunity. Right, I've already created the opportunity. To me, it is a test. Do I will I show up? Will I put myself in a toxic place where people just seem to jump at the dime to fight with everything, knowing that one or two people really need my message, or do I shy away because I don't want to do it? That's hmm. a test. Interesting. So when I think of that, I, I think of two opportunities. <laughs> I think of, you know, you have the opportunity here to continue forward, to be putting out content, to be positively impacting several hundred people a day that, that see it, you know, yeah. almost killed uh, my dog. <laughs> that was scary. We were testing out a, a basket on my new bike that I got. And she jumped out of the front. I did not think in a hundred years she would do that, but she did. And it was a scary moment. And it really allowed me to reflect on how much love and joy that little being brings me every day. You know, I was like, oh my God, I could not imagine if something happened to you. Was Courtney with you when it happened? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was right in front of me. We both stopped and we're like, you know, expecting her to be her, but no, nope, just popped right up. She was good. So that was, that was the highlight. Got a new bike, almost killed my dog with the bike. And, <laughs> and uh, so if it doesn't have multiple purposes, we don't want it. Okay. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me know how that goes. Cause there's some things that I'm like, man, only serves a single purpose. You might need it, but we'll see. Like what? What comes to mind? I mean, Coffee cup, right? No, it serves and, multiple purposes. That holds liquids. It holds dry goods. Dry I, goods in a coffee cup? Dry cereal. Granola. You could throw yogurt in there. I could eat it. This all is, right. All right. Like, I get, think about this is like If you really want bug. to, you can make a case for anything if you really not, want to keep not it. Not anything. Like a suit that I wear once a year. Takes up space. I have to dry clean it. I have but, to maintain but then it. when that opportunity comes up where you need a suit, you're not even gonna have a suit. Birthday suit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday suit. I always got a That's suit. That's a different kind of a band, man. <laughs> and I think if we can all, at the end of this episode, look at, for a truth and find people that you know don't agree with that truth and sit down and talk to them, have conversations with them, we'll have a much better world. Oh yeah. You know, like, think about, like, this whole podcast, what was this based on? Lunch at Who Hut, knowing you and I didn't agree on everything, but thinking that in the middle of these conversations, we could serve people. What if we all do that? What if we all take our truths and go, hey, you don't agree with this truth. Let's talk about it. Why do you feel differently? And not put all the not spend all the time trying to convert you to my truth and me to your truth, but say, hey, dude, maybe my truth is like 20% right and you're 80% right. Cool, I'll find it in the middle. That's where I'm going to grow. Mm-hmm. We have literally in 2020 gone from one chaotic thing to the next with very little conclusion to the last chaotic thing before we turn to the next one. Yeah. I, I hope that we're at the end of hiding from shit. Right, racism has been an issue. We've passed it from generation to generation. I hope we're at the end of that issue. Let's fix it. We want police reform. Let's fix it. So I hope that we are at the end of the America that got us to this point. I hope we're at the end of just blindly believing what comes across our televisions as truth. It's funny because we put so much weight on our personal history sometimes. 
and whether it's good or negative, like, oh, I was the, I was the, I was the smartest or I was the strongest back in the day or, you know, to where we, we don't realize that we have an opportunity to be reborn every single day yeah. and we don't have to carry our personal history with us. I've realized that I can't control everything that happens around me. I can't control my environment. There's always external factors all the time, right? And this year, I've really done a lot more inward work. And I've realized that I'm always free within. You know, I can close my eyes. Yeah. And you're absolutely free to, to, to think, to go anywhere you want. That's why we have a brain and imagination and we can, we can meditate and think and visualize and that I can escape any external reality from going inward. I read somewhere that there's only two things that we're innately scared of and that's loud noises. You know, if if you're a baby and you hear something loud, you get frightened and startled. Yeah. And there's something else. Snakes. Not snakes. <laughs> but there's something else. I'll, I'll, I'll have to look into that. But that we have a fight or flight response. And I think that there's some people that are just wired to always flight. 